Hey, I'm Brad Riley uh, with Aerocharger Turbos. Congratulations on buying your kit. Uh, we're we're going to uh, walk you through some steps today, but uh, today I've got Calvin Felker with me. Uh, he's a Kadoo ambassador, backcountry expert, and also uh, part of our race team. Uh, tell us a little bit about what we're going to do. Um, I got my 2013 Summit XM, as you can see here. Finally got her broke in. She's off the break-in period, so we're going to install the Aerocharger Turbo Kit today. And we're just going to give you a step-by-step, -step. and we're also at the end going to go through how to set up your chassis for backcountry to make sure your kit works as best as it can. First step in the manual is the uh, first couple pages just gives you uh, an idea of what's going to be in there. We have some warnings, some guidelines, some things of that nature. Uh, if this is something you're not comfortable with, do find a good quality dealer to do it. Uh, we really like people getting involved with their install. Uh, we end up with a more knowledgeable customer at the end of the day. Um, but if something in here is uncomfortable, do find somebody uh, to help you with that. Uh, this manual is for the XP. It's also for the XM. It'll start with the XP teardown, uh, basically removing plastic panels. Um, we have an XM. We're going to skip that first section. We'll go to the XM only prep. I got to take off. What is there? There's six of these little Torx head bolts. You gotta pop the little ski -doo plastic. It just pushes forward just like that. There's a sensor plug that you're gonna have to be very careful with. There's two tabs. I, uh, I just tweak them out a little bit and push up. Push out on this tab here, which releases it. Push down on both tabs, push up. There's also a little tab here that you'll have to push, rotate it clockwise, and then it should slide forward and disconnect. Then you'll come up here, use the same little screwdriver. There's two slots. You push towards the back of the vehicle. It will clip. Get your finger under there, hold it up, go to the other side. Again, you're not prying it out. You're just pushing down until it clips. It'll pop right out. There's a gauge. You plug in there, you have to unplug. There's also another plug in up in here that you got to get. Just got a little tab you push down on. You also have to unhook this little hose from your ECM. Brad's removing all the bolts. So you get all the screws out. Piece should slide forward like so. Come off, very simple, just like that. Next section is uh, gas tank, and uh, we've already got the seat off. Fairly easy to do. These little buggers, show us how we get those off. They always kind of frustrate me. Um, there's a little tab back there, but I just grab here on the front, rotate it forward. This comes off the bowl, it comes right off. So I will start with the gas tank. I always take the, uh, when I take the cap off, I always like to put them back on as soon as we possibly can. Uh, another good point is w when you're done breaking in your sled, get all the pump gas out of it you can so you can start with some good race fuel. I always recommend 100% race fuel to get started just in case something goes awry or whatever. So you've got a collar up here that needs to come off. It's got a few holes in it. There's lots of ways of doing it. There's a couple of Allen wrenches and a screwdriver. Um, you could use pliers, grab a couple of them and screw it around, or what we make, which I actually keep in my toolbox all the time, is a nice little uh, little tool. You want to unplug your hand warmers, thumb warmers, same deal, little push down tab, push pull type deal. There's also another little plug in over here for your Desk key, same deal, the little push down tab. There's also these little plastic tabs. You want to be careful not to break them. Just press down, press it in, comes right up, and then the piece will come off. Next section uh, in the manual is going to talk about removing the stock muffler. Fairly simple. Got a couple of tricks though. Um, I always use uh, a BRP spring tool, it's an amazing tool. Um, if you, if you don't have that, good pair of vice grips uh, will work as a spring tool as well. Uh, one thing I do want to emphasize uh, is the sensors. Um, 
in the muffler and in the pipe. We'll leave the one in the pipe, but in the muffler, uh, we want to be very careful with the sensor. Historically, they've been very fragile. Um, so we'll, we'll take it out and we'll treat it uh, very carefully. 17 millimeter wrench, put it in there. There's the sensor itself. This is actually the 2013. Uh, years past, it was a, a different looking sensor. But uh, always try to tuck this up out of the way so that it, uh, it can't get damaged during the rest of the install. With the muffler out of it, it's a little bit easier for me to show you. You've got one spring um, right here that'll attach to the muffler. You've got one on this back side that's kind of a little difficult to get to. And you'll have two on the pipe itself. Uh, that and the sensor comes out and you're good to go. To continue removing the tank, you're going to have to remove the two 13 mil nuts and then also four different 10 mil bolts up top. You got to get this little vent tube off here, kind of get a little screwdriver and loosen her up so they kind of stick. There's also a couple connectors you got to do. Again, be very, very careful with this sensor. And this steel here is a simple automotive. Push in, pull out, push down on that tab. Fancy little screwdriver again, the same type of uh, sensor, similar to what's on the, at least as far as the plug-in goes, is what's on the air box over there that we removed earlier. So what I do is I pry up those tabs, make sure they're off, and then it should slide right out. There's a big tab in the back that you have to get to. The whole plug will come out just like that. Fuel line, it's the same style as this. You'll push down on that tab, push in, pull out. And voila, tank, and like we said, this one has fuel in it. You'll want to drain the fuel and make sure you get fresh race gas in there. So now I'm going to remove the belt. Put this fancy tool here, divided by ski -Doo. Pushes the sheaves apart, which drops the belt, making it very loose, easy to remove. When you're removing it, you will have to get back here. There's a little retainer holding a bearing. There's a 13 mil nut on there. And also for your brake cable, which is also part of the retainer, there's a 10 mil nut here on a stud that you have to remove both these nuts and get that retainer to move forward, which we'll show you in a little bit. I'm gonna remove this rear air box, which is easy. There's just a tab right here. You push it forward, the box will slide sideways. Sometimes you'll have to help that tab out a little. Flexor forward. The box will slide right out and you'll have plenty of room to work. Um, so then you'll leave it loose there. We'll go over to the other side. You'll have to pop the rubber out of the chain case, which Brad's about to show you. I want to make sure you don't drop the washer down in there. Now you're going to have to hammer it through just to get this bearing out of here. Um, it's nice to have a buddy to help catch it. Not necessary. We do them by ourselves all the time, but it's nice to have your, someone to help catch the secondary as it comes out. When you drive the rod through, uh, it's real important there's a shim on the back of that that you want to keep in place. So we always leave lots of room in here. So inside there, you've got the chain, the gear, and the shim. So it can all go back together without having pulled the chain case apart. But if you're doing a, a uh, gear replacement, now it's time to do it. Took this 17 mil wrench, loosened the lock nut, and then you're able to loosen the tensioner. It's just tensioner goes in there, tightens your chain, take the, the tension off the chain, makes it a lot easier to do. So now that you got the secondary off, the next step is to remove this piece here. Got Three 13 mil nuts, one little guy hidden back there, and also a 10 mil bolt with the nut on it. <laughs> the next step is to remove the reed pedals and install the new turbo reeds. What you have to do is to remove the throttle bodies and obviously the reed boots as well.
So now that I got the reed boots out, get in my kit, find the little outer turbo reeds that are in the kit. I'm putting Loctite on the bolts just to make sure that they're gonna stay in place. Also, when installing the reed pedals, you'll see this corner has a slight angle to it. Make sure that the corner that's clipped, cut like that, is in the upper right-hand part of the reed. When you're looking at the reed like that, it's gonna be in the upper right. Main thing is to make sure your reeds are sealed. They have a little bit of a concave to them. So they need to be that way to have the correct sealing. While in placing, replacing your uh, reed pedals, make sure you wipe off the oil and kind of give them a once over and look at them, make, make sure they're not fraying or cracking on the ends. I mean, these are pretty much brand new reeds. So especially if you have a lot of miles on your sled, it's always good to inspect your reeds, make sure they're not fraying or cracking on the ends. And if they are, make sure they're replaced with the new OEM reed. Now that we've got the outer reed pedals installed, we're gonna reinstall the reed cages into the motor. Make sure not to over tighten any of these. Anything on the motor is super critical. So I just kind of snugged them down with the gun and I'm du double checking them with my hand just to make sure they're not over tightened, but they're all about the even tension. Reinstall the throttle bodies. <laughs> oh, that's beautiful. So after you reinstall the throttle bodies and get your hose clamps tightened, you're gonna have to reinstall the drive shaft support arm and make sure you torque all these bottom nuts to 18 foot pounds and also torque this top bolt to 124 inch pounds. So now that we got the tower on there torqued correctly, we're gonna take the tower brace, secondary clutch here. While you got your can off there and you haven't installed your turbo yet, it's a good time to take the chain case apart, check everything out, and also geared up a few teeth on top. When you put your secondary back on, make sure you get that bearing fully seated. Best way is to look around here, take a look, make sure that bearing's up against the aluminum tower there. Sometimes you might smack it a little bit with the rubber mallet and then tighten down your nut over there, it pulls it all together but it's a good thing to double check before you tighten down your nuts. So I loosened up these hose clamps here, pop that sucker off the throttle bodies, toss it to the side. So after you get the plastic piece off, you wanna take these two screws out, out of here. They will give you some longer ones in your box, in your kit. They do come with lock washers. I still put a little dab of uh, Loctite on there just to be safe. To make it easier, put a little oil on the O-ring so they don't tear and also heat up the aluminum so it'll expand, get a little bigger. They are very tight for a snug fit. My throttle bodies were almost a little wide for this so I loosened up the four screws on the top. Make sure to torque them to spec, put your Loctite on if that's necessary. This is the first one I've ever had to do that on. But after I loosen them up, the box seems to slide right on there with no problem. New to the kit this year is this spring here. Keeps the box from popping off. Nice little addition to the kit.